Okay, uh, I don't need no statement, okay, just... Yeah, I'll keep a question for you, Coach. What's that? Well, we'll just open up. Yes. Since over here you give us your sleeper as the guy this year, that's not getting enough attention. I don't know, this is a pretty good class, so... Uh, I think, you know, when you look at Willie Rodriguez, because he committed and he, when we went through the recruiting process with him, kept, kept evaluating him, uh, I would say he is, but he won't be a sleeper long. Uh, he, he's a guy that really just got better and better. I mean, I think it sees on here that he's 6'3". He's probably about 6'4 and a half right now and about 240. So when he did that home visit uh, last week, he really looked like he can come here and play. So if I had said he was a sleeper, he, he won't be one for long. So. Same question I asked Coach Stoops. How important is it to keep those top in-state recruits here at UK, especially after the season Louisville had and not going down the road? We did beat Louisville, though, right? You did. Okay, so uh, uh, it's always important. Uh, every year it's important. Uh, I mean, if you look, I think every guy we wanted, uh, I don't know, Chase is not over there, but every guy we wanted, we targeted, we got in the state. Uh, I was happy to see some other guys go other places. It's, it's, it's showing how Kentucky football is going. But if you look at them top five guys we got, uh, they were recruited by a lot of guys. And, uh, you know, I just think every year, you know, we got to keep the fence around Kentucky with the top guys and then branch out. But we always going to go after it. And, uh, and Jeff's a good friend of mine. So, you know, we're going to have some battles. And I'm looking forward to it. You know, the recruiting rankings are what they are, but at least by the numbers, Brian's one of the highest ranked guys to ever sign here. Like, what makes him so good? I think it was what Coach Stoops just said. When you, when you put everything together, I mean, this whole class, we got some high character guys, but this, this young man is, he's damn near perfect. Uh, uh, 3.7 GPA, he's very technically sound in how he wants to live his life, meaning nutrition, training, uh, spiritual side. And I'm going to be honest with you, he, me and Mark was talking last week, he got to be one of the physical looking guys I've ever seen like that, that can come in and you say, this guy like an SEC football player. Uh, I've seen a picture where he was standing next to, what's the D, Miles Garrett, and he looked bigger than him. And Miles Garrett is a big guy. So uh, he, he, he's just, what I love about that young man is, is the way his dad has raised them. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of coaches stay away from something like that. They don't want to be where dad is a lo that's very involved. But you look at me and Mark, where we came from, our dads were very involved in our life. They were very strict. And so I think we related to that. But <laughs> this kid is, uh, they need to do a study on him. If you just talk about <laughs> him as his makeup as a, as a young man. So we're very excited to have him. You, how, how's that relationship? With him and his family, how long does it go back uh, being one of, one of the many youngs on the Believe it or not, it goes back probably, probably about 10, well, with his dad, about 20 years. But with Brian, my younger brother, Raymond, who uh, played college quarterback, Brian really was a quarterback at first, and my brother was training him, and he told me, this young man's going to be a, a big-time quarterback. And, and I've and I seen the pictures of him. He, he was about 120, 130 pounds. And then you look at the transformation now. I told my brother, you, you're always right, but you're always wrong, too. He, he's, he's a D lineman. But uh, it, it goes back, you know, young Sean, he so big. And, you know, whether it was a Lynn Bolton or, you know, Tamir Dubois or Jordan Jones, when them guys come out of there, you know, it was really three schools you could go to back then. It was Oklahoma, Nebraska, and then Kentucky. Now the other guys are out, so now you got to go to Kentucky. That's pretty much what they – want and they know we're going to take care of the guys here so Nick Holmes is, uh, you've signed a lot of Ohio guys but the, the, the top 10 guys from Ohio there's only a few and they end up hitting and yeah. Nichols is another one of them what, what, what do you think he can bring uh, he's, he's I mean he's, a lot of people throw around Mike Edwards they, they got to be careful saying that but this kid is really close to Mike being Mike Edwards but he's faster he has very high IQ and he's very twitchy. What we use the term of being twitchy, and he's, you know, he can play corner, he can play safety, he can play running back. He was a punt returner. Uh, Coach Jones did a really good job, uh, you know, with with him. And I mean, he's a guy that that could come in and play, like Stoop said. I mean, he's a very talented young man. And you know, I think he's what was he number nine in the state or ten? Uh, you know, they 
when they when they started coming to Kentucky, I think at one time he was four, and Brian was two. Now I think Brian is what four, and he's ten or something like that. So we'll take them all, you know. We we, we love Ohio. Chip, is that a relationship you have established? And does he want to play linebacker too? How did that go? Well, Chip was a very highly recruited kid coming out of Akron Holbin where he won like three state championships. And we know the high school coach, uh, Coach Ty real well. We call him Ty. He, he's a really good friend of ours, me, Frank, and Coach Stoops. He, I recruited him. He committed to Arizona. And it was kind of like in Ohio, they was like, well, how did this happen, this kid getting out of the state? Normally you'll go to Kentucky or Michigan or Ohio State. And he had all three offers. But he went to play for Herm Edwards. And Herm did a really good job uh, selling them, you know, what they what they were had to offer. But this kid, when I talked to Coach Clink, when they played Michigan, Ohio State played Michigan the last two years, Clink told me, he was like, they were glad that he was leaving at them. I think last year he had like 80-some yards in the first half, and they stopped running him. So he's a very high-character guy, very physical guy, uh, and – I think the biggest part, he's going to be a great addition to leadership. I thought leadership was down on offense last year, and bringing in a couple of these guys this year with Chip being one of them is going to be a big part of our offense. In your opinion, what hasn't gone right with high school quarterback recruiting over the last decade, and, and what makes Cutter and what you have coming down the pipeline the, the way to, to get that fixed? I think, you know, it's, it's kind of like when, when the transfer portal opened up. Normally, you will have high school guys, you develop them, and you keep them, and you develop them. Now, what's happened, you bring in a guy like Will Levis, any guys you had under that, they knew Will was going to be the starter. And, and in this time and day, kids still do not want to be developed. It's all a, it's like a microwave generation. Or everybody want it quick. And so I think getting Cutter, he brings a lot to the, to the table. Uh, he's, he's a great athlete. He has the swag. Uh, guys rally around him, and people don't. It's an understatement. He comes from a very athletic family. Uh, dad was a basketball player. His sister was like Gatorade uh, basketball player. So he comes. He's and he's the youngest. And when you're the youngest, you take all them beatings from your older sister and brother. And I just think he's the perfect fit for us. Uh, is it fair that you have to bring in an older guy? It's not. It's not fair to put all that on him. Now, if he comes in and blows us away then it's a blessing. But I do believe that he's going to be the guy that's going to be the future of this program. What were the conversations with Jordan like after he entered the fold and coming back? Is, that, is it awkward in any way now that he's, he's back in the fold? How do you all handle that in this era? Of you really want to know what that conversation was like? Uh, <laughs> well, some of the stuff I can't say, right, so, Susan? So, but it was, it was more like your son leaving the group. We have a very tight niche group in that tight end room. And, you know, Caddis was one of the first guys who was pissed that he was leaving. And that shows you what the room is because Caddis, if he was a selfish guy, he was like, hey, I'm glad this guy's leaving. But, you know, there was, I ain't going to say the school name. We all know what the school was. Uh, they they uh, poked him a little bit, and they did want him. And they were, they were at him pretty hard, and they offered him a, a lot. But I think he looked at the family. He looked at the relationship. He looked at our office. It, it, it fitted him more staying here. And so I'm we glad there was no hard feelings. Uh, this is a new era. It's no different from the NFL where, you know, you're an unrestricted free agent. And you go out and test, and then you come back if the team wants you. And we definitely not want to lose him. He's a, a big part of our, our football team. Was there any frustration in your room because – there were weeks where the tight ends got targeted a lot, and then there were a month where they wouldn't get targeted at all. How did your guys kind of handle that over the course well, of the year? I try to handle my room. We, we're, you know, we're not selfish. Uh, we're going to do what we need to do. If we got to be involved in the run game, we got to be involved in, in the pass protection. It's, it's quite ironic that the NFL is looking at Jordan and Josh Caddis just off of the stuff they do blocking. They, they see Jordan make plays athletically. But if you're not a blocker, you are not going to translate to the NFL. You have to do everything. And uh, that's why Jordan and Caddis are really guys that they look at. It. So uh, there was no selfishness because I'm not going to allow that. But we have an open discussion. We always do. 
and then I'm the final say in there, and and it's like, hey, we move on because we we a team first, we a team first position group. What was it like going out to Montana to find a punter or kicker? First of all, I did not go to Montana. <laughs> uh, Jay Boatware, but. Uh, no, I, I'll leave that to Jay to go do that. Uh, I mean, trust me, I'm not going to Montana. <laughs> Man, I'm not going to Montana. But we have coaches that, you know, Jay's a special teams coordinator, and he that's where if the guy was in Japan, if he's a good kicker, we're going to go find him. So we're we, we going we gonna to put our resources in that to go get anybody that we need that can help our team. Vince, what do you like about Augustel and Ace Johnson? First, they're from Kentucky. They remind me of guys that Coach Slarman used to recruit, uh, big blue wall type guys. Hayes Johnson is a very country, tough, uh, likes to hunt, and I think he fits our old culture of what we used to be, and, and I think Coach Jenser is bringing that back. Now, Abba was a guy that people don't understand. Abba was recruited very highly. There was a lot of people trying to get Abba. Uh, Alabama was trying to get him to come down. A lot, a lot of schools, a lot of SEC schools, and he, he stayed – Committed. Uh, he's an athletic guy that can play probably center guard, air tackle, and you know he wears an 18 shoe, and he's still young. You see him; he got a baby face. So I think he's still gonna grow. But uh, I, I really believe them two guys fit the mold of who we were when Slarman was here, and that's that's where we're trying to go to. You've signed some helps on some pretty big classes. How does just your personal hall? How does it stack up with some of the other classes that you've signed with you? These guys probably remind me of. Probably that 14 class. I don't know if you remember where there was a lot of four-star guys that we got out of Ohio and uh, got out of. I think it was two that was in Kentucky. I was just impressed with the defensive guys. Uh, these guys that we recruited, a lot of SEC programs and Big Ten programs, love these guys. Love to get these guys. They were still poking at some of our guys, even getting down to before it went dead. Uh, there was head coaches coming to some guy's school in Ohio uh, trying to see if he was in the school, even though he was done uh, with, you know, already had graduated. But it's, it's, it's a pretty good town to class. And then what makes it, what, what makes it harder is that now you got to do the transfer portal and you're trying to manage your, 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 your roster. And then you going out and getting like, I don't, I don't want to say we want to go out and get a whole bunch of, uh, portal guys, it's it's like the NFL now, and I really believe it. This is our this was draft day, high school guys, and we went out and signed four to five to six unrestricted free agents to plug in for our team. Vince Devin Smith was one of the best players in that area, but like Coastal Jordan, what what was it that you guys liked about him so much, and what he can bring to the team? Who was this? Devin Smith. Devin Smith. Oh, I mean, he was just like anything else. When you when you look at guys and you have these battles going down to the end. You have to stay. It's just like how I always use it if you're dating, trying to date a, 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 a nice-looking woman and you finally start dating her, you better keep giving her nice stuff and being, bringing her bringing her flowers and bringing her chocolate because if you don't, somebody else is going to do that. So I just feel that, uh, you know, with Devin, that it was like you better always do your homework. That's, that's in recruiting, period. It's you can't talk about specific recruits in the future, but there are some younger brothers coming up. What are the dynamics of recruiting younger brothers or family members of guys that you've recruited before? Don't piss their parents off now. Don't piss the people off now that are players here. And just do do right. It, it's no different when you recruit a guy that went to a high school in 2014 and now they got a guy coming out in 2020. Everybody talk. And if you your program did that guy wrong, you probably not going to get that kid. And now if you got a brother or a cousin or a nephew or something like that, you better have a good relationship with that school because nine times out of ten, there's so many other schools out here, they look for something to be bad. So I think it's always about relationships. And I'm going to tell you guys this, relationships won over this recruiting, this recruiting class. I don't know how many times, you know, you can just be a good guy and be, they like you, but at some point, we have to step up and, and, and compete because we are really close. You look at the guys we're signing and, and, and even look at the, the games we have won. I mean, I give Jeff Brom a lot of credit. They, they, they were a game away probably from being in the playoffs, and we went down there and beat them on their home turf. So we, we just have to go to this new wave of where we're at in recruiting. And I know it's Christmas time, so I don't say, hey, guys, you know, give it this or give it that. If you 
want your program to be where it's at and you will, and you can give, we thank you so much for giving. Uh, I, I think it's really good when your, your, your state school wins, and I think we are very close to taking this to another level. Coach, when you get in the room with these parents and kids, how quick do they mention the money and NIL these days compared to years before? Well, years before, that would be cheating, so <laughs> I don't know if that ever came up, but I will say this. It's the new wave, and that's a good question. It's, it's the new era we're in, and some people, it's just the guys that we recruited were highly recruited guys, but there's some people that you recruit, the first thing that come out of their mouth is, uh, what's your NIL, NIL package like, or what can I get this and that? And I'm going to be honest with you, I stay away from the guys because I think it's going to be a problem anyway. You have to adjust to where the time we're in right now. So you, we can't talk about NIL. But when they get on campus, they can talk to Eddie Grant. He's our NIO guy. And then we got the collective. They talk to them. We're not allowed to talk about that. But does it come up? Yes. And I say, you know what? I'm really, I, I, I'm not suited to address that. I can tell you when you get on campus, you can talk to these guys. And that's how it happens. You talk about this new era of college football, money getting thrown around. You have these high schoolers coming in. Not all of them are going to be day one starters. How hard is it to obtain these guys and develop them and, not get them taken from you guys later on in the, their careers. Relationships and hopefully you're recruiting the right guy and hopefully your collective at the time is, is, is somewhere fair. Because I'm going to tell you this, guys, most these guys we got on our roster, and we got guys on our roster now that are very talented and people are poking them. They love our culture. They love the coaches here. They love the community. Uh, <laughs> Susan is a real, I mean, they just, everybody they just love pretty much in this program. And so it's like, do I want to go somewhere else just for money? But you better have some kind of thing here to balance that out. If you don't, you're going to lose them. You see it right now. It's, it's, it's going all over the country. You're losing guys. We, we rarely have lost guys uh, to money. But it always been relationships wide. I think the relationships worn out more, and of course you have to give them something. But I don't know how long that's going to last. It's with those relationships, how helpful is it to start them early with guys like Willie and Scott? They were poking late, but it seemed like they were just too late. Yeah. So it's funny when I did Willie's uh, home visit. I said, you know, it's kind of like a man that's going to get married and he <laughs> got a wife. He 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 really he really and. He looks and he's been, been with that person for a long time. And now, the day before the wedding or a week before the wedding, you decide, hey, I want to go over here. But you don't really even know that person. And so I look at it like that. Like, I, I think these are 40-year decisions, guys. For you to be committed to a, to a school and then flip. I, I, when that stuff happened with Wooly, there was a, another tight end that's very highly recruited that wanted to come and visit like the last – that Saturday, I didn't take it because I'm not, I have no relationship with you. And so I just think when you do that, and these guys I see that flip the day on signing day, I just think that's, I really don't think that's crazy because you're not really having no relationship with nobody. You're just going in blinded now. And maybe it was because somebody offered you a little more money. To me, I still think you have to have some kind of relationship with people and trust with people. So. Mark has recently been committed to Ohio State. Can you kind of give us a breakdown of his game and just what you got? So Mark Nay went this. Mark Nay went to my son Michael, who's on our strength staff, went to Toledo Central Catholic. Uh, he graduated in '09 when I was coaching at Toledo. He went to Alabama, and Mark they had, Toledo Central Catholic has a lot of talent, and I was very glad we finally got somebody from you know where Big Snack is from. I don't know if y'all remember uh, Phil Hoskins, but getting from this. That program, Toledo Social Catholic, is like going to like Maslin, going to like Douglas. It's a very, very uh, high profile program. And so he was committed to Ohio State. Uh, Yenzo did a really good job early identifying him. He came, visited, and we identified this kid when he had really no offers. And then soon after he left, he left us, I offered him. Then Ohio State, then Michigan, then Auburn, all these people offered him. And Sometimes kids in Ohio are pressured to go to Ohio State, as you know. They, they pressure, they, it, whether it's an uncle, whether it's – and then the dad was like, Coach, that was, my, that was on me. I told him, you need to go to Ohio State. 
He felt that he rushed too early. He decommitted. There was a lot of other schools in on him, but he really decommitted because he wanted to look at us. He wanted to take an official visit here. And, you know, he fell in love with it. He's a very physical dude. Uh, you know, you know, there's a school in uh, Detroit that's pretty good that we got some guys out of, Deion Walker now. They played them in a game, and we asked their coach their opinion about him. And he said, that kid is so physical, I wish I had 12 of him. And he said, he, and we are, we are a pretty tough team. So he gave him high praises. This, he's going to be a really – Really good addition. He's a very smart kid, really good parents. And like I said, it was very good to get a kid from out of Toledo. Some of the recruiting sites had Brian as an outside linebacker. You guys list him as a defensive lineman here. Is he going to bounce back and forth? Is that going to be determined? What do you Bro, you have, I mean, you've seen this dude. He's like 275 right now. <laughs> but he has 6% body fat. Like, it, it's not. <laughs> and, and trust me, he, that's all natural. He's just, he really is a guy that just really trains his body. But he's so big and strong. I think he can play three. I think he can play the six. I think he's, he can play Jack if he, you know, if he trained at it. But he, he's one of the prettiest looking dudes that I pre have ever recruited out of high school. I mean, he, when he come on visits here, during, some, some parents thought he was like a former player from the NFL coming back. And we would say, and he's only 17. He's only 17. So, no, nah, he's a, <laughs> he's a good looking dude. <laughs> Let's do one more. Is this the best collection of Smiths you've ever signed in one class? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. We knew when they uh, when they got back, and everybody knew this was a joke. But everybody got when they was in Connecticut, they felt we had no chance. But soon they crossed those state lines and got to Kentucky. We were ready, and uh, he, he got great parents. Uh, Dad's a military guy. Uh, them guys are really good. I mean, Gerard and Jacob are really – you're talking about guys that was offered a lot to go to other places, and they really wanted to play for their home state. Now, we still had to recruit them. And, you know, I, I probably talked to their dad about a thousand times. He, I mean, he, he's, he's a good dude, but I told him, I said, bro, when they, they signed his papers, I said, me and you going to have a serious talk about some of the conversations we had. So I'm, I'm very excited about him. Uh, Corbin is – you know, that's a – Really good area. Uh, me and Mark was down there two weeks ago. And, you know, when you go to this, these small areas in Kentucky, once I took over uh, recruiting of Kentucky, I, I really got to know some very small towns and a lot of good people. You'd be amazed that you think they don't know you, and it's like you walk in the store and they know you. So it, it really was a good good feeling getting out, going to these smaller, smaller little rural, you know, towns and stuff. So it was a blessing. Thank you, guys. I'll email you guys the entire package. Right. Uh, the entire class. Okay.